said Osborne. What is she up to now? Four 20-point games. Went for 23 against Tennessee. They have both earned the right to be in this title game. How neat is this? Nassau, the Bahamas, high-level hoops. Here we go. All we need is a little sunscreen and an umbrella. <laughs> yeah. And right on cue, there is the star, the all-Pac-12 stud, Charisma Osborne on the baseline. Now UCLA with a man-to-man -man defense, and Cameron Brown is a player I enjoy watching play. She brings the tenacity on the defensive end. Both teams very sound defensively in their recent wins. After the miss, the Bruins coming back the other way. This is UCLA starting five, brought to you by Atlantis Paradise Island. Osborne, the centerpiece. She's averaged more than 22 a game, but she's showing you she gets her points in different areas all over the floor. Well, Prisma Osborne's able to get points because this season she has moved off the point. She had to run the point guard position with Gina Conti out last year with an injury. So her natural position, Osborne, is that shooting guard spot. So you see number one in the white. That's the freshman, Kiki Rice. She runs the point. Kiki Rice, number two recruit in the country. And she just gets more and more comfortable as she gets experience on the floor. Marquette clears it. So this is the five that Megan Duffy tries to counter with. King is the leading scorer you mentioned. But a variety of players can go off at any point. Chloe Murata, Liza Carlin, all averaging at double figures this year. I really like the chemistry of Marquette, Golden Eagles, they just play well for each other. It's not one player feeling like they've got to be the show. That was an offensive foul, by the way. So possession back to UCLA. Well, I think Emily Bussoir took it in the gut. I think she may have taken it in the midsection. Yeah, no good. Bussoir with the, with the block. And you said it, tough collision. Well, if there's a brick wall on the floor, it's Chloe Murata. She is so strong and so physical. She's really, I feel like that bully on the floor. The 6'1", fifth year senior, the leader, a respected voice for this Marquette team. UCLA 5-0. Led for all but two minutes of that win against Tennessee. It turns it over here, so ball back to the Golden Eagles. So the two stars, Charisma Osborne and Jordan King, guarding each other. King into the paint, nice move. That's the thing, Jordan King can be so good off the bounce, and when she requires two defenders, she has a terrific court sense in finding shooters on the perimeter. So it's King and Osborne with the first two buckets of this one. King just went one-on-one -on -one against Charisma Osborne, and. There was no rotation to help, and she recognized the reverse spin back using that right. Both are the seniors, really the bedrock for both teams, and they play mature basketball, defensively strong. They do a lot of things well. They don't just excel in one area. Osborne gives it back to Marquette. Well, here's the thing with Marquette. Marquette may be, and I, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but not to the same talent level as a UCLA, I mean, they got the number one recruiting class, but what Marquette has are cerebral players. You've got players like Jordan King, she, she graduated in three years. You've got engineers, you've got masters on the floor. So really, Megan Duffy can play on the intellect of this team. It's a high IQ basketball team. This is the freshman in transition, that's Kiki Rice. Christine Iwala. Couple of freshmen making an immediate impact for UCLA. Marana, that's just a veteran move. Well, it's what Marquette did against Texas after a made basket, even running in transition. If you don't have somebody back safety, they're going to make you pay. You mentioned the talent for UCLA. Number one recruiting class in the country this past cycle. So Corey Close, who's now in her 12th season as the boss there in Westwood. A whole lot of talent pieces to work with this year. When I asked her, I said, do you feel a little disrespected when you have that number one recruiting class and you're not ranked? And very humbly, Corey Close says, we haven't earned it yet. Yep. And 
She is all about really helping her team stay in the moment, not getting too far ahead, not feeling entitled, but go out and get your respect. And they had to beat very good South Dakota State team in the quarters, knocked off Tennessee, the ranked program yesterday. One second to shoot, does UCLA realize it? Conti does it. Ball back to Marquette. Well, see, Marquette is staying very disciplined defensively. You talked about UCLA beating Tennessee. UCLA was able to get free and open. They hit 16 threes yesterday. 16. Most in about a year and a half. That was a lot. 53% from, from beyond the three-point line. Murata on the attack again. Still free, and Marquette with a new shot clock. I tell you, it's going to be who handles the physicality and the toughness best wins this game. Jordan King again. She's got a smooth stroke. She's averaged close to 14 a game this year, but distributes the ball really well, averages five assists a night. Again, Great defensive prowess on that Marquette side as well. well I'm impressed too with the uh, conditioning of Jordan King. Since she's been at Marquette, she has averaged playing over 30 minutes a game. All four years. All four years, right? Championship game battle for Atlantis. Late shot clock offense once again. This time it's Conti. The ball's going back to Marquette. So here is Megan Duffy. Former Big East Coach of the Year. She guided this team to the NCAA Tournament in 2021. Look at, she's won 74% of her games in just a few years. Look, she has taken her coaching from the way that she played, gritty, competitive, intentional, and she brings the energy in practice. The players talked about, they looked up seeing her play on YouTube. So they know the type of player that is now their head coach. She played the WNBA for a few years back in the day. Yeah, she was at the New York Liberty, I think the Minnesota Lynx. Yep. Traveling violation. So Carlin gives it right back to the Bruins. Just backdoor cuts, and that's one of the areas that really they that Marquette does in making reads. The defense overplays, cutting back door. You don't stand and don't dance with your defender. Cut back door and go hard. So Marquette, three of nine from the field. UCLA, a two of six. Osborne with the offensive rebound. That's a great dive by Bosswar. She's got to get the ball inside. Lisa Suntock draws the foul. It's an offensive foul, rather. Sontag still on the floor. We we'll take a timeout in Nassau. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. Bad Boy Mowers builds a better mower. Mow with attitude. Also, Atlantis Paradise Islands, Bahamas at heart, and complete sports management. See the world through our eyes. Kevin, there's some mowers that are in the hallway here in the entry as you come into the arena. You know how to check them out. You said you're in the market for yeah, a mower. Yeah, I'm in the market for a mower. I have no front lawn, but well, it's good, <laughs> good branding. I mean, why not get it now before they run out? It's just a brilliant venue setting for this tournament. By the way, there's Lena Sontag. Took a tumble right before our prior timeout, Carolyn. She was able to get up on her own power on the bench. It's Marquette with the two-point lead. Murata lost the handle, and this is Kiki Rice, the freshman from Maryland, in a rush, off glass and off line. So UCLA, two of eight from the field to start. That'll stay here after it's batted out of play. I like the aggressive play of Kiki Rice going full court, but she's got to recognize, make a better decision of when you have numbers and when you don't. Rice seemingly made all the right decisions yesterday. Had the 15 points, six assists, a handful of rebounds. Yeah, every time I see win. every time I see this freshman, the number two recruit in the country play, she just seems more and more comfortable continuing to gain the confidence on the floor. Marquette turns it over, so UCLA takes over. 
Number two rated recruit in the 22 class. Highly regarded McDonald's All-American. Matter of fact, she played in that game with a couple of her teammates right now. They all went to Westwood. I think it was a gang decision, maybe. <laughs> but she's averaging over 10 points a game. Uh, she is a great distributor. She's got to do a little better job of taking care of the ball. One of the areas Corey Close talked about, too, is she wants her to continue to grow on the defensive side of the ball. This is Rice to the bucket. And that's one thing I love about Rice. A lot of times freshmen come in, and, yeah, they're either strong left-handed or right-handed. Rice does a really good job going both ways. Knotted up at six, late first quarter championship game. Battle for Atlantis. King goes with that left hand dribble again. Made a basket from right around there earlier. Goes back to UCLA. It's become a little bit more difficult. Not as easy to get the three point looks that UCLA was able to get against Tennessee yesterday. You mentioned it. They took 30 of them yesterday. That is a surplus of threes. Marotta cuts off the German that time. Emily Bissoir got a look, bounced out. Golden Eagles on the move. And Marquette, everybody on the floor is about the same size. They can defend every position. They can switch on all screens. So the coverage takes away that perimeter look. Rice got the defender leaping in the air, draws the contact, and so Rice can earn a couple of free throws, a couple of points at the line, I should say. Now, that's a good decision in transition, recognizing that she had a step on the defense, but the defense was coming. So she hesitates, shot fakes, and gets herself to the free throw line. There's the line, 15 points, six boards, six assists for Rice. Really commanded that game. You mentioned her coach, sure, cut down on the turnovers, especially in this first season, but had a great command of the game plan. What did she say to you after the game yesterday? Hey, we felt confident in executing our game plan. They certainly did yesterday in the win over 11th ranked Tennessee. Well, UCLA was locked in. They knew that they had to battle with Tennessee on the, on the boards. They also had to knock down outside shots. But the thing that Corey Close was most impressed is that her team gave up good shots to get great shots. She really likes how her team is moving the basketball. And as you've alluded to, it's going to be a challenge today against this stout defense. Great cut to the basket. That's Liza Carlo, the junior from Minnesota. Knotted up at eight apiece between two teams projected to be at or near the top of their respective conferences. Mar Offensive foul that time. Marquette just locked in, especially between the ears and recognizing where the defense is. They're reading when a screen is set and there's a switch. Instead of trying to pop out for the shot, that slip action is where the openings are going to be, getting motion to the basket. I can imagine that then UCLA is going to adjust, protecting the paint, and that's when Marquette start looking for that outside shot. Both teams with six of their eight points in the paint. That's where they've gotten much of the offense this far in the first quarter. Marlin sets the screen. Mackenzie Hare part, an offline on her first look. She's got a good stroke from deep, though. Did you say Ms. Mackenzie Hare parted? Part your hair. Is that where you were going with that? <laughs> you know, that's a, another way to look at it. <laughs> and McKenzie Hare in game one against Texas. 0 for 8. 0 for 5 from the three-point line. Well, she found her shot yesterday against Gonzaga. She was ready to pull the trigger. And I talked to assistant coach Kelly Kamara, and she said, oh, yeah, when McKenzie walks into the gym, there is not a shot she does not like. Three of those triples yesterday, the freshman from Naperville, Illinois, made quite an impact. This is Nkumu. A 
aggressive defense. Carlin for three. So what have we seen from Carlin? Carlin first, she set the screen and slipped. This time popping out for the three-point shot. She has really worked on diversifying her offensive game. First triple of the afternoon for either team. Three in the air for Bessoir. Ball back to UCLA. That Marquette defense has been a bright spot thus far. And when you're playing Marquette, the thing you don't want to do is allow them to hang around. They have battled through two tough games against Texas and then Gonzaga yesterday. They are prepared for the moment. They work on shoot situations all the time. So down the stretch, they're ready. Hey, keep it close, striking distance. They know they have a shot. And Gonzaga had a lead in that game yesterday at times. Marquette comes back. They kind of seize momentum away from the Bulldogs. Gonzaga had a couple of threes late in that game to try to knot it up, maybe force overtime, but they did not go. The Golden Eagles, they don't panic. Very poised, even down late in the shot clock. They get look, good looks at the basket. So shot clock off here for UCLA. 20 left in the first quarter. Marquette by three. It's going to be a high ball screen when that pinky goes up. Let Conti make some decisions. Conti going to work off glass, no. Three seconds for Marquette. This is Nkumu. Short, that's the end of the first, and Marquette has the three-point lead at the end of one of our championship game. Golden Eagles, Bruins in the Bahamas for the title. AP had done it before when Tennessee and Connecticut played. They held up again just this past season. It just shows the quality of talent that Lee Miller has brought yes. here. Because I think that seven of the eight teams in this women's side could all be ranked. The tournament continues to grow. Just powerhouse programs all week here at the Atlantis. And you're right. These two teams as well that are on display, they were right at UCLA right outside the top 25 rankings at the start of this week. Marquette has certainly showed it might be in those top 25 rankings once they are released later today. We shall see. Two quality programs to say the least. Well, last week's poll, Tennessee was ranked number 11. Texas was ranked number three. Both of these two teams that are playing today knocked those two teams off. Gina Conti just picked up her second foul. That's number 10 in the white for UCLA. This is Kefez for three. Claire Kefez, the redshirt junior from Kansas. That's Conti going to the rack on the other side. She gets bumped, has a couple of free throws. The patience that Marquette has to execute, moving the basketball, and the shooter, Kefa stepping right in to the pass, right on time, right into her shooting motion. Perfect. Boy, Megan Duffy has a great feel for her rotation, it feels like, at this point, especially after several days of watching her team perform at the highest level. Well, it looks like so early in the season for Marquette, roles are defined. Yeah. Players understand their roles, what they need to do for their team, and playing selfless basketball. So Conti hits two, now head to the bench. UCLA with some pressure. Carlin heaves it out of play, and that pressure does force the turnover. Now use it. Go ahead, Karen. Well, I think Corey Close just saw, look, UCLA really worried more about their offense. And so how do you take the concentration off your team's offense? Put the focus on the defensive side. Try to speed the game up. Put the focus on getting skills, steals, getting stops, building that confidence, and then your offense will come. Rice back to Bessoir. Attacks the paint off glass and in. First basket of the afternoon for Bessoir, the sophomore from Munich. And 
Kumu lays it up, earns some free throws. The first game against Texas, Rose Kumu had a phenomenal game. You know how physical and athletic that Texas can be and can at times get teams on your heels. Well, you got to fight pressure with pressure. And, and Kumu was able to really get herself downhill and get opportunities at the free throw line. She got steals as well. She turned her defense up in that first game of the tournament. She did. The junior from Iowa City, Iowa, extends Marquette's lead to four. It stays here. A program after they polled the league's head coaches that was projected to finish sixth out of 11. We know those preseason rankings sometimes can be misleading, but if one thing, maybe it's given this team a veteran team, a bit of a chip on its shoulder. It has finished near the top of the Big East. Matter of fact, three straight top half finishes of the Big East under Megan Duffy. Okay, but when you look at the Big East, you're talking about Connecticut. Creighton, who went to the Elite Eight, Villanova, DePaul, and Seton Hall in there. Look, that's no slouch conference. No. Harlan wants another three. Yes. Eight early points for Liza Carlin. Again, defining roles. You know where you need to be on the floor. Carlin spaces out, plays to her strengths with the versatility of her game. Best war finds Sontag, yes. Yeah, Sontag needs to get going for UCLA. This is a very mature freshman that plays like an upperclassman. She's got a strong body. She can get it done inside. She's got an outside stroke as well. It's one of a handful of those freshmen that come off the bench. Again, the top rated recruiting class for UCLA. Sontag was able to snatch that pass away. Now you look at UCLA's lineups at times. She's got three freshmen on the floor at a time, and they don't look like it. They look very composed on the court. Here they are. You have four top 50 rated recruits in the class of 2022. Gabriela Hawkins, of course, you'll see soon enough, as well as London Jones, but Iwala we've seen, Rice, Sontag, maybe the X factor of that class. I mean, how impressive was the maturity you saw yesterday? Oh, the composure is, it's very impressive. And look, Corey Close is really enjoying the riches of having such a deep roster this season after struggling through injuries last season. I mean, it was just really a tough season to go through. It just seemed like adversity after adversity presented itself, and this year things are coming together. And off to a 5-0 start. Three-point game again after the Osborne basket. So now four for UCLA's leading score. And Charisma Osborne throughout her career. I think she was overshadowed a little bit. Remember, Michaela Onyenwede was the post player for UCLA, and then Osborne had some injuries. But she has been a show since she got to UCLA. A terrific ball player. And Kumu improvising, two to shoot. Carlin rejected. Sontag again. Both these coaches able to dial their teams up when they need to turn the heat up a little bit more on the defensive end. This time it was UCLA. Sontag with the block on Carlin. Boy, a player like Sontag developing quite a bit of confidence here in this arena the last week. UCLA's block three shots. and still trying to get the offense ignited on this end. Shooting 32% from the field and down three. Born. The handles, turns, finds Rice. Cuts to the pan, her pass was knocked away, and Marquette draws another charge. Jordan King has the responsibility of defending Charisma Osborne, and because of that, Osborne only four points, only four attempts from the floor, causing her to give the ball up and then there. Who is it? Chloe Murata. Rotating in to take the charge. That's the brick wall you do not want to run into. 
That's three times today Marquette's drawn a charge. The defensive rotation, the attention to detail. Oh, that's tough. Oh, no, yeah, Strong twisting move. shot. Second foul on Bessoir. Carlin heads to the free throw line. Carlin, she's the junior, averaging just about 14 points per game this year. Really excellent rebounder. Went for 12 and 5 in the win against Gonzaga. Hey, remember, this uh, tournament is concluding today. However, the Bad Boy Mowers battle for Atlantis men's bracket. It gets started on Wednesday, primo competition from eight different conferences. It's just high-level hoops all week. Oh, yeah, we get to go watch and practice tomorrow before yeah. it kicks off on Wednesday. That's going to be a fun tournament. Yeah, really quality teams. you got the reigning national champs, oh, by the way, in Kansas. Yeah, and you got Tennessee that's trying to put things together, figure out when to shoot the three and when they need to get it inside. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm interested in seeing Dayton, and then you've got uh, Manny Bates that's coming in with Butler. UCLA, uh, pardon me, USC won the Pac-12 a year ago. Wisconsin won the Big Ten. Yeah, it's a premier field. Osborne looking to free somebody up, and Rice is just active. Cuts and the beneficiary of a great pass. Marquette by three. Hair back into the game. Finds Nia Clark. That's a senior from Indianapolis. Carlin got held that time, trying to cut to the basket. And that's a fifth UCLA foul. They are in the penalty, but back within three, Carolyn. UCLA getting back to the discipline, execution, cuts and moves. Going to need more of that to get themselves in this game because they find themselves right now down by three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays and Atlantis Paradise Island, Bahamas at heart. So you got five different ranked teams. This is what feast week I love. It's like feast week and a half, basically, right? We have there's so much quality hoops. Well, that's that takes a, us to Thanksgiving. A lot of coaches take this time of the season. It is before conference play starts. You see where you are, what you're doing well, and what you need to work on before you get to conference play. Dominique Onu offline just checked into the game. It really does feel like this is where you can find out quite a bit about your team. So, <laughs> yeah, here are the numbers. 12 days, we've got more than 240 hours of hoops across the ESPN networks. There's another one. UCLA getting in on the charge game. The rotation there, absorbing the contact. Dominique Onu. And draws the first foul on Carlin, who's got eight points of Marquette's 23. Oh, offensive foul. They whistle Sontag for the illegal screen. So that's her That's second. hard for me to see. Sontag is just catch. Oh, yeah, she did. She took a little step, the little, sh little shoulder shove there. Got called for it. Yeah, the chicken wing, that will get you caught. One of the rare errors Sontag has made. The freshman has been really solid this week. Whistle away from the ball. Carlin caught it. And that's going to be a foul, the first on Cameron Brown. They get the second. Kevin, keep an eye on Cameron Brown, though, how she defends. The coaching staff at UCLA talks about her having a high basketball IQ, and she's even referred to as another coach on the floor. She never takes a playoff. She brings the intensity. You'll watch her when UCLA is in transition defense, and she's the first one back. She is like air traffic control, telling everybody where to be. Just a bona fide veteran. 
Look how hard, I mean, she just, she, everything she does, she does 100%. Brown hands off to Osborne. Jordan King has been Charisma Osborne's shadow. Shadow uh, Osborne hadn't been able to get any kind of open look. At her worst nightmare this afternoon. Iwala's offensive board gives UCLA a second chance. Rice hangs and hits. That's what I'm telling you. We saw her go strong to the left hand, and then that time Rice going to the right. Her, her diversity of how she can play both sides with both hands and the dexterous, it's impressive. Garland's wide open. Clark had the recognition of Finer. Offensive rebound, new 20. This is King. Over the back violation. That's a foul on Carlin, so her second. A foul starting to count for both teams. Kiki Rice, number two recruit in the country. Hesitation, then gets downhill, gets her shoulder past the defense of Carlin, and then gets up and finishes on the right side. So Rice has six. UCLA within five, 3.07 to go in the first half. Here's UCLA in that vaunted Pac-12 again. You've got a handful of teams already that are in the top 25. Stanford, Arizona, Oregon, UCLA may join them after this week. But it is the rugged Pac-12 that UCLA has to go through again this year. Gabriela Jaquez cleaned up the Rice miss. Marquette on the move and Hare gave it away. Maybe numbers? UCLA hustling Osborne. Step back, high archer, no. UCLA's got four freshmen on the floor right now. Osborne, the only senior. The other four in white are rookies. And the latest Jones and Hawkins on the floor. Kennedy Miles turns up on Iwala. Murata, the veteran, with a sweet spin, but Hawkins with the board. UCLA has it connected on a field goal in more than five minutes. Rice trying to change that. Jarred free, and the Golden Eagles back the other way. Well, look, the first time this season, these teams are playing three days in three straight days, in three games in a row. Now, are your legs a factor when it comes to making shots? simulates that tournament experience that's so valuable later in the year. Another offensive foul. That time, King gets whistled for her first. Well, Osborne and King, they have been battling each other. They both understand how important their production is for their respective teams. So inside of two minutes, first half. Walla, I think, forgot that she had the responsibility of setting another screen for Osborne. Boy, Osborne hits the ground hard. Yeah, she went down hard yesterday in the game against Tennessee. It took her a minute. She was shaken for a second. Trainer came out. I don't know if she told her a joke, but she gave her a little smile. Charisma went out, went back to the locker room, then came back to the bench and was able to finish the game. Oh, I think after the trip, then Ikumu and Osborne, I think they knocked noggins, bumped heads a little bit. There's Ikumu. Jokes abound, keep it, keep it light. Well, you're right, it, it almost looked like Nkumu was anticipating Osborne to keep Falling moving. Down. Yep, and yeah. she hesitated right, and that was the collision. Marquette with some stout defense in the first half. UCLA just 29% shooting from the field. It's missed all nine of its threes. Staying close thanks to the free throws. Little bit of a 180 against this Marquette team today. Well, not having Conti on the floor because Conti really can penetrate in, attract a lot of defense, and then 
Oh, the offensive foul again. Osborne working hard defensively. Look, she chased hard on the screen, and the screener moves. The, off, the officials had their eye on it. Chasing off that screen, little, little hip check from Miles right there. She was the one guilty of the offense. Now we got a whole bunch of players with several fouls inside of a minute. Championship game of the battle for Atlantis. Osborne stumbles. Here's Jaquez, rise and fire, got it. Jaquez, I think that's a family affair. You know, her brother is on the men's team at UCLA. Name's got a little cachet around Westwood these last few years. So now two of them on campus. Marana, the veteran move, did her work early that time. Went for 18 and eight in that win yesterday against the ranked Vols. You see the senior, Charisma Osborne, tells her freshman point guard, settle down, we want to take the last shot. Got about a second and a half differential between shot and game clock. Matter of fact, about two. If they take it down, they can all but milk the rest of the clock as well. Miles is whistled for her third foul. Now that's going to send UCLA to the free throw line. Both teams in the penalty. So Iwala has a pair of free throws. And she makes both of these, and Marquette would have the last possession. Wondering if we'll see UCLA bring some full court pressure. And they forced a turnover the last time they applied some pressure on the backboard. Right. I mean, why not create some excitement before you head in the locker room at halftime? Right, yeah, okay, here's some excitement. It's an unconventional three-point play. And they bring the heat, bring the full court pressure. Tie things up. This is King, eyes up, checks the clock. Three seconds, crossover, couple hands in her face. Online but left it short. All knotted up. We wouldn't expect anything different here from these two unbeatens. It's all about defense now. They have to make <laughs> some adjustments in the locker room. Cook it up. Halftime here in Nassau. Let's go back to Bristol. Here's Ellen Rebecca. All right. You are watching ESPN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's. Welcome back to the battle for Atlantis. Start of the second half. Championship bout between unbeaten Marquette, undefeated UCLA. Two teams that have proven quite a bit this week. Now, Kiki Rice, she's gone for 10 in the first half for UCLA. It's been a struggle, but she's getting her own. The well, points have been rationed, and it's been a struggle for either team to get anything easy. There's been no wide open shots. The defense has been stellar. And Liza Carlin for Marquette. Now, she got open from the three-point line, but those were few and far between as well. They had to step up, both Rice and Carlin, because the stars of both the two teams we started the game talking about, They've had a few struggles, struggles of their own. Now they've combined to go four of 13 from the field. Neither has hit a three, but you have lauded the defense that either has played, particularly Jordan King. Boy, they have stepped up. It almost looks like they're taking this battle personal in a sense. Well, Osborne and King both under their averages. Now remember, Charisma Osborne Shoe averages 16 points a game. Jordan King, she's 14 on the season. Those numbers, by the way, those first half stats brought to you by Complete Sports Management. Marquette on this side of the floor in the Navy. That was Chloe Marotta, first shot short. Rice always on the move, very precocious freshman. The highlight of UCLA's number one rated recruiting class. Here's Emily Besswar. Marquette cannot allow UCLA to get heated up from the three-point line. We saw what UCLA did to Tennessee yesterday. Marquette held a lead. It wasn't a large one, yeah. but for much of that first half, it was ahead. UCLA in front. Marana, this side of the floor, no. Rice, just a freshman. Always in transition. Oh, another offensive foul. This time it's in Kumu. Just the tough defensive plays of Inkumu getting back, understanding that the importance of transition defense on UCLA. Rose and Kumu rotates. She establishes good defensive position, is able to take the charge. Just outside the arc. Marquette has taken four of them. 
Point discipline, fundamentally sound team. They just do a lot of everything very sharply. Great cut to the bucket. And there's Jordan King. As I talked about, the intellect that Marquette plays with, the reading of screens, taking advantage, playing very opportunistic. Marquette had to down the third-ranked Longhorns two days ago in the quarterfinals to reach this game. Knocked off Gonzaga yesterday. Here it is in the championship game, looking for a signature win, signature foundation maybe for their season. Carla now with a dozen. I think Megan Duffy talked to her team in the locker room about we got to pick up the tempo, play a little faster, playing a little too slow. That's the second foul on King. So that sends Gina Conti to the free throw line. Conti only played a little bit over eight minutes in that first half. She had a couple of fouls early. And really, she brings a calmness to the floor. She is that point guard that can distribute and get everybody set up in the right spots. Bruins back in front. And Kumu breaks the press. Backs out, realize UCLA had cut everything off. They actually sticks the jumper hey, so. if, there's a, if there's one way to break a press, just bring it yourself. Defense is back, you get space, knock down the shot. And she takes a charge. Back to back charges taken by Nkumu. Nkumu is turning it up like she did against Texas. First she breaks the press, spaces out, recognizes she's got a post on her, and then defensively sprints down, back in transition, and again is able to draw the offensive foul. Hits the basket, first one back the other way. Brilliant work by the junior. She's going to initiate the offense with Marquette ahead by one. Clark, shadowed by Rice that time. Arana draws a foul, a push on the way in. So that's before the shot, Marquette to inbound. That's the first on Charisma Osborne for Marana. You see that number 52, right? Special meeting for her. It is. Marana is wearing number 52 in honor of her father. Her father played basketball at Marquette. About eight years ago, her father passed away, and so to honor him, that's why she has chosen to wear number 52. And look, she is Miss Marquette. Her grandfather also was an athlete at Marquette. Really special reminder every day you look at that jersey of who you play for. Marquette's coming back the other way, and Murata sizing up Bessoir. Carlin gets cut off. Sontag with her second rejection today. You know, there hadn't been a whole lot of uh, basketballs going through the hoop, but I still think it's been a very well-played basketball game between these two teams. Two teams playing very hard, just fundamentally sound defensively. You know, some people get entertained because a lot of shots are made because of bad defense. That's not fun to me. I'd like to see Good shots made against great defense where you've got to really play the game. So I've really enjoyed watching these two teams play. Both of these teams embody that. The two remaining unbeatens in the field. is looking for Sontag, good post defense. They finally get it to her and she converts. Uh, Sontag, she's that versatile guard. She can post you up. She also can score from the perimeter. Tie up ball back to Marquette. Possession arrow favors the Golden Eagles. And Sontag doing her work early, getting positioning on this one. I love the reverse seal and then giving the target of where she wants the ball. 
if there's one advantage that you could see UCLA does have, it does have a little bit of a height advantage over Marquette. Bruins attacking with a one-point lead. Bessoir. Yeah, right over Murata. Yeah, you talked about the height advantage that UCLA has. That Marquette's going to have to adjust the vision, what the ball sees, able to come inside. King trying to break down Sontag, keeps her in front of her. This is Nkumu, draws the foul. And the junior has a pair of free throws coming up. That's the third foul on Sontag. Well, she really had her welcome to the show moment. Yesterday, the 12.7 rebounds of the win. By the way, our first reminder to let you know, another great NBA Wednesday doubleheader gets going at 7.30. We got the Celtics hosting Luka Doncic and the Mavs, followed by a clash of Warriors and Clippers. That follows at 10 Eastern right here on ESPN, also available on the app. A little warm up for Thanksgiving. I it's just a plethora, a bevy of brilliant hoops. Absolutely. The UCLA extended there. They're, they're up by three right now. Marquette really needs a bucket. Kay Fez had that one partially tipped away. And then o uh, Okosun walked. Ball back to UCLA. Kind of to negate the height advantage, Okerson coming into the game for Marquette to try to really slow down the paint production of UCLA. Marana turns, finds Kefez. Hair cut off by Rice. Yeah, brilliant defense. That sequence for UCLA. Hawk has read the pass and converts. Timeout Marquette. It's a five point lead for UCLA. Biggest lead of the afternoon. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. Started later tonight is the Vivid Seats Empire Classic. Syracuse and Richmond at 7 over on ESPN2. St. John's and Temple follows at 9.30. That should be two quality games in Brooklyn. Right, this is this is what Feast Week is all about. Terrific matchups. You said it before. These are the type of games you can start to learn some things about your teams. Getting prepared in a short amount of time. Quick scouts. Well, especially playing in these tournaments, so that you really, as a coach, can see who's ready to handle the big moments, who's ready to handle the crucial situations. UCLA by five in the main event championship game of the Battle for Atlantis. Each one of these teams undefeated right now. Three ga third game in three days. Quick turnaround with a noon start today. Three in the air, four hair. Yeah. Talk about McKinsey hair got heated up yesterday against Gonzaga. Can she find it today? Rice got right to the bucket. Could not convert. 
Hayer, bounce pass. That's a brilliant bounce pass to Murata. The transition game for Marquette. They definitely packed transition in their suitcase when they came to the Bahamas. Yeah, that's been key in the second half, huh? 13 points in this quarter at just 27 at half. And Marquette, Carolyn maybe can build on its 5-0 run when we return. Marquette was worried about the transition game of UCLA. Well, I got a note for you. UCLA may need to worry about the Golden Eagles because they're off and running and they've tied this thing up. Forty up, 346 to go, third quarter. Championship game, battle for Atlantis. And now those, those 240s are the most important numbers. I don't know if you uh, just noticed, look at that, there's a there's a number next to UCLA's name. That It was not there an hour ago. Did you just break news that UCLA has cracked into the top 25 this season at number 20? This is breaking news. This is min minutes ago, AP, latest AP ranking has been released, UCLA was right outside the top 25. There they are. So here we go. We've got a ranked team. Marquette very close to making this a in-game adjusted ranked on ranked battle. They're the second team outside of the top 25. Well, I think if Marquette can pull this, on, pull this off with a win over UCLA, they'll find themselves in the top 25 next week. Both of these teams have earned the opportunity to play in this game, no doubt about it. That's a foul on the shot, so two free throws coming for the Golden Eagles. Well, Marquette knocking off Texas to start the tournament off. That's huge. It is. Texas was number three in the country. Now, Texas has tumbled. They have tumbled down to number 19, dropped 16 spots after two losses in the tournament. Yeah, back to back. You referenced it yesterday. They're playing without Rory Harmon. Their point Correct. guard has been out. And then you look over at what UCLA did. Defeated a very good South Dakota State team that started the year in the top 25 and then knocked off the 11th ranked Vols. So each team defeating a ranked opponent to reach this title game. Just a compliment to the quality of talent that Lee Miller has brought here on the women's side. So if we get to watch the women play championship today and then the men start on Wednesday. A week of hoops, high-level basketball, that is. Osborne recognized that Hare fell, missed it right at the rim. It stays here, so a new shot clock for the Bruins. Now, Corey Close's team, no stranger to being in this position. But Kevin, what's going to be fun to watch is that both of these coaches, they work on situations, so who can execute the best down the stretch? Bessoir offline. And it's a loose ball foul on UCLA. Corey Close disagrees. Ball back to Marquette. That foul was on Brown. That's her third. Well, that was Brown going a little over the back on Jordan King. Free throws are going to, and have, played a pretty big part in this game. A lot of players in foul trouble. UCLA 8 of 10 at the line. Marquette 11 of 12. That's Sydney King. Inching closer to double figures today. Marquette's run, it continues. Stretches to his 7-0 run. Yeah, Jordan King has been huge. She is that player that's going to be the play marker, maker for Marquette. She is going to make some major decisions down the stretch, but UCLA has Gina Conti. That's a six-year college player. At the line for one more. Gina Conti had a great career at Wake Forest before transferring last season to UCLA. Got injured, had to sit out last year, but she brings that composure, maturity, big plays to the floor for the Bruins. Well, you're a fan of her play. 
Beswar gives UCLA a second chance. Osborne off the screen, attacks, lays it up, no. Got her fingertips on it, and Brown secures the offensive rebound. Rice to initiate. Woo! Beautiful spin. That time, though, Carlin was able to knock it away. That's the athleticism of the freshman. And Liza Carlin inside. She brings a little bit of size inside for the Golden Eagles. Marana goes body to body, put the shoulder down right into Brown. Wouldn't go that time. There's a foul away from the ball. That's on Marquette. So UCLA keeps it on this side. So that is Jordan King's third foul. King's now going to take a seat. Osborne, nope. Marquette on a 7-2 run, but without Jordan King on the floor. Mia Clark knows Megan Duffy's system. Transferred in from Xavier. Late shot clock offense, Murata improvising. That's the old school up and under. Terrific footwork. The fifth year senior from Mequon, Wisconsin. Murata now into double figures. One minute to go in the third quarter. Championship game, UCLA and Marquette. They go two for one. Conti, that's offline. <laughs> Tipped. The signal is it was last touched by Carlin. UCLA has it. Mariotta, terrific footwork. Keeps that pivot foot on the floor, eyes on the rim, little shot fake step through and the finish. That's a veteran move that time from a veteran player. Well, she's such a respected voice, really the bona fide leader for this team as well. Marquette, the prop has been the turnover, 17 tonight. That's one more than its season average. About a two and a half second differential shot game clock. Conti has options. She can come off that ball screen. She's got two post players who can step out and shoot it. Sontag. Rice, second effort. Free throws coming. It's a big time play by a freshman. Never given up on the play. Not saying, well, the end of the quarter's coming up, but play till the very end. Every opportunity, you got to take advantage. This has displayed so many great instincts on the floor, Rice has. And these two free throws could tie it up before the fourth quarter. Corey Close talks about with Kiki Rice, very cerebral. That's the good news. Bad news is, Sometimes she doesn't trust her instincts, but she is showing that it's all coming together, and she's getting better with that. Rice has 12 tonight. That leads all UCLA scorers. And these are big ones to try to knot it up. McCory Close has Cameron Brown at the table to check in so that there's a substitution. Marquette can't just get the ball up and head full speed to the other end. Ninth time this game has been tied. It has been neck and neck competitive one from the start. 
Marquette has held a lead for a little longer, but not by much. Five seconds, and Kumu starts to turn, tries to fling it. That time it was London Jones who was all over her. And Carolyn, we go to the fourth quarter for a title, knotted up at 44. Neither one of these two teams are going to back down. The Golden Eagles, they're bringing it in transition. The power and size and the size of UCLA. Hey, you better buckle up. This fourth quarter, we're in for a good one. UCLA Marquette knotted up at 44 championship belt. We're about to start the fourth quarter. You said you wanted to walk with the Sharks? Absolutely. There you go, you might have to just dive right in here. It's the best place to do that. <laughs> you can walk with the fish or you can eat some good fish while you're down here in the Bahamas. You know what? That's a better plan, actually. Why don't we just do that instead? Uh, we got to get some good conch salad while well, we're I, here. I had, I had a little grilled conch yesterday. Nice. Yeah, grilled. You know, put a little chimichurri sauce on there. You can't go wrong with that. There oh, my go. gosh. This game, Carolyn, it, it's felt like it's just been very competitive. We've just seen the competition on display. No, between both of these teams? I can't say it enough about this is the best commercial for this tournament the level of competition that has happened down here you're seeing great talent you've got kiki rice that in each game has gotten better as she is as the weekend has gone on the freshman's play has picked up ucla a mid-game rise they're now the 20th ranked team of the country and for good reason after toppling a ranked tennessee team yesterday in south dakota state in the quarters and as Corey closes team, they're always there, always at or near the top of the Pac-12. She's guided this Bruins team to five straight NCAA tournaments up until the WNIT appearance a year ago. This is just a winning program. Hey, but watch Jordan King, number 23 for Marquette. Because she is the mind, the brains of the Golden Eagles to make good things happen down the stretch. She will be the one that makes it. Look at that, right yeah. there. Some hustle. She's going to make it happen. She keeps Marquette in ball games. Now she's into double figures with 10. Slowly but surely, she does always get hers. The four-year starter. Now, and she she's playing with three fouls. So keep yes. an eye on number 23. She right now. Just got switched on to Charisma Osborne. Osborne back it away. She refuses the screen into the paint. Here's Sontag. One to shoot. Conti. Oh, yeah! A big bucket. UCLA has missed Gina Conti in the first half. She is making up for it in the second. She had that early foul trouble. But she has settled in in this fourth quarter. The threes that were falling yesterday have not today up until to this point. Look, veterans on the team. First, Jordan King, she missed the first yeah. shot, but followed it up, getting the put back. And then as the shot clock is running down, six-year player, Gina Conti, knocks down the three. There are veterans all over this court. Conti, the latest example of the vet making a big play when her team needs it. Offensive foul. It's four on Jordan King. That is critical with 8.33 to go still. Boy, and you see the grimace right there. She knew it was just still sliding to the left. Got to be disciplined down the stretch. Now, Mia Clark, transfer in from Xavier. She played her rookie season for Megan Duffy when Duffy was at Miami of Ohio. Osborne way off that time, was bothered defensively. Conti again! Conti now with 11 and UCLA with the lead. Now for Marquette, it's going to have to be Rose Kununu that's going to have to really take charge. Chloe Murata, settle down. 
Carlin as well with Jordan King on the bench. Yeah, and Kumu, there she is, number three in the Navy. Three on the way from Hare. She left it short. UCLA can extend its lead. Tight ball game throughout. Neither team is led by more than four or five points. It's a great situation for Kiki Rice to be in early in her career. Running the point. Sontag. Hit the glass way long. Rice continues to grow before our eyes this week. When he saw Gina Conti move to the wing, let Rice run the point. Well, Carla needs to get a look. Bayer wants one. Nope. Sontag snatches it. That's back-to-back -back threes. Hare has misfired on it. Hit one earlier, but... Twice going to a freshman. Yeah. Now Marquette might want to look to going back to Carlin to make plays, making the reads of whether or not it's outside or in, but just continuing to manufacture points. Conti, right off the rim and out. Kubu, lead feed, Clark for three, short. That time Brown got back to really challenge the shot. The foul, by the way, that's whistled against Conti, so she heads to the bench with four fouls as well. Like the brains for both teams sitting on the bench right now in foul trouble. Yep. Jordan King for Marquette, now Gina Conti for UCLA. Brown gets it in just in time. New shot clock for Marquette. Oh, Backdoor nice. cut, and Kubo got it. And Kumu making a big play with King on the bench. Best war. A good Lost defense it. by Murata. Yep, gets it back, able to restabilize. Six to shoot for UCLA. Rice, the step back. Ball back to Marquette. Can we watch how Chloe Murata calls for the ball, 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 and then the hard step up from Clark to sell it. The defense overplays in the hard back door. Exceptional play, and that brings Marquette back within one. Fourth quarter of the title game. Three in the air. Carlin wouldn't get it to go that time. Osborne, UCLA's top scorer, has been for several years. He has been held in check today. Just five points. Trying to get free. There's a bump, and Mackenzie Hare is whistled for the foul. Mackenzie Hare getting great experience as well, being a freshman, having the responsibility of defending Charisma Osborne. Third team foul on Marquette. Osborne puts it up and puts it in. I think UCLA draws up every underneath out of bounds play to Charisma Osborne. The two time All Pac 12 stud. Past the midway mark, fourth quarter. Murata nails a huge three. <laughs> Here we go. Tied up. How about this game? Ten ties, ten lead changes. Three second violation. That gives possession back to Marquette, so a tough mistake. Golden Eagles have it. 4.24 to go in the title game, and it's a tie ball game. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Atlantis Paradise Island, Bahamas at heart. And movement, the cleanest watches in the game. In Nassau, the Bahamas, the brilliant setting that it is for the the oasis that it is, but also for the high-level hoops, UCLA and Marquette knotted up at 51 in the title game. Carolyn, 10 ties, 10 lead changes. You brought this point up earlier. It just has been a highly competitive game featuring a whole bunch of players that play with quite a bit of effort, determination, competitiveness, no doubt about it. Well, Marquette had a little tougher road to get here in playing number three, Texas, able to knock them off. And then yesterday against Gonzaga, went all the way down to the wire. It was tied at the half and were able to come off and pull the victory. Can they do it today? Clark puts up a three in the corner. That one's knocked out, last touched by the Golden Eagles. UCLA, on the other hand, knocked off San, uh, South Dakota State and then really handled Tennessee yesterday. Really was not, uh, yes, they had to be focused and they knocked down shots, but the game was never in jeopardy. Charisma Osborne on the baseline, back up top. This is Brown. One dribble, fine Sontag. Rice is open. Offline of the three. Sontag has had a huge impact on the offensive glass. Sets up Osborne. No. Wow. Best war. It's a third quality look. Heaves it up, and finally that time, Carlin clears it. Uh, that was a missed opportunity for UCLA right there. And UCLA continues to have some struggles from deep. Three of 16 from beyond the arc. Now can Marquette take advantage? And that's it. Attack the basket. You don't get the shot, but you cannot foul going to the rebound. That's a big no-no for Murata. Yep, and now that's the third team foul on Marquette. Only the second on Murata. Who just Jordan. checked back in, yeah, for Marquette. Yeah, Jordan King back in. She's got four fouls. She's got to play smart for this last little more than three minutes to go. That is Marquette's X factor. Leading score, go-to score, especially in a tight game like this. Conti hit one from there earlier. Boy, it looked good. Bessoir is going to get whistled for the over the back that time. Third team foul on the Bruins. Players now, every time the shot's going up, hey, they're jockeying for that inside position. It's getting physical inside. No doubt. King in the corner, left side. Looking to break free. Osborne all over her. They switch. King, oh, gave it away. Brown with a great sleight of hand. Osborne to Conti. Hair for three and the lead. Way off, plus an offensive foul. Carlin gets whistled for the personal. That's Osborne again on the floor. She has boy, just laid it all out there. You've referenced the physicality of this one. Well, UCLA turning up the defense with the steal, then running in transition. Corey Close talks about giving up a good shot for a great shot. And Carissa Osborne with the drop of the dime to Gina Conti, who is able to pay it off. Conti has been terrific, especially in the second half, had just the two points at the break. And now with 11 this half. Conti initiating UCLA by two. Rice attacks, drives in, left it short. Last touch by UCLA. UCLA is trying to go at Jordan King. 
King has a responsibility of guarding Kiki Rice, so she's got to make a decision. Do I guard her or do I play it safe? She's got those four fouls. Marlin lost it. Several terrific defensive plays by Cameron Brown in the final minutes of this one. As UCLA with possession still ahead by two. And Corey Close takes the timeout. 1.14 to go in the championship game. Title game battle for Atlantis. 1.14 left in the fourth quarter. Carolyn, UCLA with possession up by two. Well, and right now, with the basketball, it is important. It doesn't have to be a three, just a two or three. You just want to extend that lead to five, all right? But you want to use the shot clock as well. 22 seconds on the shot clock here. And then if you are able to score, then immediately you've got to get back transition defense, seeing somebody back, because I can imagine Marquette's going to get it and bring it quick. This is Osborne, left open, looking for a cutter. Conti backs it out. Eight to shoot, Besswar comes to set the screen. Osborne, back out to the German. The three is off the line. Clark with the rebound, and Marquette has possession. Megan Duffy says call the timeout. She does, they've got it with 47.9. That's just the second time out Duffy has taken, so she's got two. UCLA has three as well. Boy, if, if the men's bracket winds up being as exciting as this one has been on the women's side, that it's going to be a great remainder of the week. Here's the men's side of the bracket. You've got the reigning national champs of the Kansas Jayhawks. Dayton, of course, creeps up the rankings. Tennessee, the reigning SEC tournament champs, Wisconsin. USC, BYU, NC State, Butler, brilliant field. Oh, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a, a fun rest of the week here in the Bahamas calling this game in this tournament. That's coming up on Wednesday, the quarterfinals. All right, so now Marquette calls the timeout. One of the areas Marquette has been successful is getting the Carlin screen, and she can slip or pop. Put her and Jordan King in action. Marquette scoreless the last Four minutes, 40 seconds. Two-man game with these two. I like that slip. Now you've got a mismatch. You've got Kiki Rice down low. Marotta, head fake, floats it up. Brown got her hands on it. Last touch by UCLA. Ball stays here. Look, now there's 28, there's 20 seconds on the shot clock. So now, Marquette needs to use clock. Look to tie this thing up. They don't want to score too soon and give possession back to UCLA. Two point lead for the Bruins. Garland's got it. And Marquette uses the timeout. They've got a couple, one remaining for Megan Duffy. And so you're right, now it's a battle with the clock. The shot clock reads 18, 25.6 left on the game clock. Yeah, in, right now, Megan Duffy's got it. We called this timeout to talk about the execution of what she wants to happen underneath. Then once UCLA gets the ball back, then I can see where Megan Duffy would try to slow the ball down coming back. If they're able to score, set up a zone press. You want to leave it open gaps, but you want time to have to go off the clock so that UCLA cannot really maneuver the ball around. Where Corey Close, if Marquette scores, I could see where Corey Close would call the timeout. She's got three left. She can advance the basketball in the women's game. The ability to do that, draw up an execution in front of her own bench. Carlin back to King. Marotta. Left-hand dribble into Bessoir, floats it up and in. How was that not a double oh. dribble? I'm kind of agreeing with Corey Close. She caught it, Mariotta caught it, 
dropped it, and then took off on the dribble. Take a peek. And Marotta gets it. Can she dribble again there after, or are they saying she never had possession? Right. Oh, that's, it's, it's up for debate. That is close. But as of now, Marquette has just tied it up. All right. 53 all. So now UCLA with the basketball. Jordan King, remember, she's playing with four fouls. Kiki Rice has been successful driving to the basket. Marquette has to be concerned with the ability of Kiki Rice, her ability to drive, the ability to fish and to finish by Charisma Osborne as well. And then the size advantage that UCLA has had inside with Suntac and Besoir. UCLA's got options. They've dominated the glass. They're plus seven on the offensive boards. Marquette with a timeout, UCLA with two. As now, you mentioned, they're gonna inbound it in the front court. Well, and if UCLA is able to score the basketball right here with 15 seconds, they've got to keep that clock in their mind because UCLA, they still have a foul to give. 15.7 left, fourth quarter title game. Brown, back to Conti. Into the hands of Osborne. Oh, lost it. It goes out. It looked like it was deflected off of Rose and Kubu. Might have nicked her shoe. So you see, Yahweh is going to keep it here. Wait, a break for the Bruins. Osborne gets it back. Lost it. Into the paint. Heaves it up. No. Brown off window. Tip. No! Overtime in the title game. A couple of looks at it. Osborne got to the paint. Brown on the backside nearly tapped it in for the win. Hey, we're here for all the basketball we can get in. Not it up to 53. Five more minutes. Here we go. And still worth reminding you, players like Jordan King, Gina Conti, they're still with four fouls. And add Eliza Carlin to that list as well. She has four in addition to King. Starts with UCLA on this end. Osborne off the left foot. That time she got it to go. Our third place game, Tennessee and Gonzaga. They're going to have to wait. That one is coming up after overtime. Yeah, back by the locker room, there are <laughs> televisions. So I tell you, they're they're taking a peek, a peek at this one. This has been a great ball game. And Kubu picks up the dribble. There's a foul away from the ball, and it goes against Jordan King. She's out. I was watching Carlin post up down low. She had made a big post up, kind of establishing her position move. I thought the call was going to be in the paint, but no. Right side of the screen. Jordan King on the push off of Charisma Osborne. That's, that's five. Look, you can't fight that pressure. When you're getting that much contact, go back door. Now she's going to have to sit on King on the bench and watch. Marquette's senior leading scorer is sitting down. Osborne offline on the layup. Hare, Carlin, and Kumu, Marana, and Clark. The five out there for Marquette. Brown deflects it away. Four point lead for the Bruins. Timeout, Marquette. She wasn't missing that one. 
Cameron Brown, all defense, Miss UCLA, up the line, down the line, and headed the other direction, finishing in transition. She's bringing the energy, she's bringing the noise for the UCLA Bruins. Her defensive uh, effort today has been terrific, top notch. This is our Buffalo Wild Wings. Wild recap, 11 ties, 10 lead changes. We've tried to tell you this one was going to be and has been compelling. You see, neither team is led by much, but UCLA's defense has turned it up a notch. 12 steals, and Brown has been terrific. That's a few times in this fourth quarter and now overtime. Her defensive abilities on that end of the floor have led to some points. Look, they talk about offense sells tickets, defense wins games, and 14 steals for UCLA. Let's put them up by four. Championship game, battle for Atlantis. Tournament like this, three games in three days, could sometimes change the trajectory of your season. If it goes well for you. Less than three and a half to go. Oh, nice crossover. Hair makes a play. How about Mackenzie Hare, known for being a three-point shooter. She takes that one off the bounce. Two-point game. Conti works off the screen. And here is whistled for the foul. She got screened by Conti. Well, Conti has to play pressure on Mackenzie Hare because she is such a terrific three-point shooter. But the freshman showed she's got handles and puts it on the deck, takes it all the way to the rack. So free throws for Conti. He's had a wonderful second half. 13 points, 11 of them after the break. After a critical miss, converts on the second. Much Corey close when Conti missed that first one. You just walk away. You don't have, you can't show a sign of panic because the rest of your players are watching you as the head coach. Overtime here in the title game. It's presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. He's coming away with a championship. Hare caught underneath, throws it away. This is Rice. Decides to back it out. Checks the clock. Kiki Rice, she's got four points, six rebounds. She's done a lot of handling of the basketball for UCLA. Osborne, the catch. Directing traffic. Kumu shadows her. Back to Rice. Shows off the spin. Converts. Timeout UCLA. And the lead matches the largest of the day for the Bruins at a critical time. Kiki Rice tried that move earlier. The spin move came up a little short. She didn't go away from it. She came right back to it. Hard dribble in, and then the reverse spin. The body control, hard to the middle, then step back, coming back to the outside. Little style at the end. Put him down, number one, Kiki Rice. 16 points for the freshman. Arguably one of the most hype recruits ever to play for UCLA. Her latest bucket. And the 20th ranked Bruins ahead by five, waiting in the tunnel. Gonzaga and Tennessee, the two teams that these two toppled yesterday. They beat the third place game coming up at well, about, what, 30 minutes after this one? be interesting <laughs> to see Yvonne Ejim going against Tamari Key against the Lady Vols coming up next That's on ESPNU. On. Yep, you're right. Here we go, though. How does Marquette respond with Jordan King on the bench with the five fouls? Well, they've got to go with that spread offense. You have screen and slip, read, patience. They don't need to rush. Hare is fouled, and she's going to the free throw line. You're right. A lot of possessions left in this game. Still more than two minutes left in overtime. Look, you have to respect all five players on the floor for Marquette. So you run a spread offense. You get the defense on the chase, but you've got to be disciplined with your screening action. Can't get moved. Can't get be moving and get called for an offensive foul. And then read where the defense goes and take what it gives you, and you're either going to get open looks or you're going to get yourself right there to the free throw line. Oh, those are two big ones. Oh, she rushed him.
Overtime in the championship game presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Inside of two minutes. UCLA looking to claim the battle for Atlanta's title. Beautiful feed. It's Cameron Brown. UCLA with its largest lead of the game at the most critical time. And Megan Duffy needs to talk it over. When it's crunch time, UCLA has put the ball in the hands of Charisma Osborne. She's a scorer, but she spent last season playing point guard, so she also has terrific court vision. And steady Eddie, Cameron Brown down low, ready to receive and finish and extend this lead by seven for UCLA. So Marquette is out of timeouts. UCLA has a couple. Both teams are in the bonus. The possession arrow does favor Marquette if they were to tie it up. And the Colton Eagles, they face their largest deficit. Cameron Brown has just been in the right place at the right time. And so right at the end of regulation, that's a tough one to have to stomach. She had to tip it, had a chance to bank it off the glass and in to win it with time running out. What has she done here in overtime? Several great defensive plays, the latest basket. Well, I can tell you, the senior wasn't going to let it happen again. They let the first one slip away. She had the focus and the finish inside. She has, you look at how Cameron Brown talks to everybody on the floor. She is a coach on the floor, always thinking the game, always thinking about what needs to happen for the next game, next play, and communicating it. Marquette needs a basket. Yes, but they don't need to rush. They don't need to settle for a three. Yep. Spread and look for opportunities to attack so you can get either the de defense collapsing, get the three, get a layup, or get to the free throw line. Arata, hands off to Hare, into the paint, the layup, yeah! One more coming! Yeah, this thing ain't over. Like I talked about, the spread offense, the options that Marquette has, not only shooting the three, the drive and attack, but also the ability to get to the free throw line. Now, the Golden Eagles just have to finish when they get to the free throw line. Mackenzie here, the freshman from Illinois. He's given Marquette such a boost this year off the bench. Missed a pair of free throws a moment ago, makes this one. Back to a four-point game. Both teams in the bonus. Next foul would set either team to the free throw line. Marquette has enough time to play this one out. They need to stop. Yeah, they don't need to foul. Just play good, solid defense. They're making Corey close use another one of her team timeouts. She didn't like what she saw there, uses it. She has one left, Marquette has none. 106 to go in overtime. Well, with 14 seconds on the shot clock, UCLA is going to have to, they can use the majority, the majority of this shot clock, right? And then as soon as, if they are able to score, then they've got to make sure, get back in transition defense and guard in the half court because we have seen how quickly Marquette can get it out and in even after a made basket. So you've got to send somebody back and you've got to have somebody pick up the ball just to slow things down and make Marquette have to execute. If UCLA happens to not score and Marquette gets the basketball, they need to be off and running with the attack mode, get themselves to the free throw line. A little, use a little drag screen action. Nesuar hands it off to their best score. That's Osborne. Four to shoot. Osborne breaking down Murata into the paint. Offensive foul. And Kumu takes another charge. That's got to be three or four for Nkumu. That's four charges, right? Rotating over, sacrificing her body for the team. That's humongous now with 53.7. Now UCLA takes over. 
still has one more timeout. So just in case Marquette happens to score, UCLA could call a timeout to advance. Marquette looking for the best shot. Uh, they got Carlin with a mismatch down low inside. Just can't get her the ball. She's got Osborne on her back. Instead, with seven to shoot, the scoop tipped, and the rebound down to Bestwell. And you got a foul. You got a foul. Shot clock is off, and so Marquette sending Rice to the free throw line, down two possessions, 23.7 left. Marquette lost its top scorer in Jordan King earlier in overtime, fouled out. They've been playing without in the last few minutes. UCLA took that seven-point lead. Looking to grow it now. Look, Kevin, a lot of times when it comes to close games down the stretch, people want to talk about who scores the most who scores the most points. Well, it's, sometimes it's the little things that happen. You got to credit number 35, Cameron Brown. She can't get the rebound, but she tips it back, and that allows UCLA to have this possession, get fouled, and get to the free throw line. She has been the X factor for UCLA in the second half in overtime. Rice's free throws makes it a six-point lead, still a two-possession game. Marquette's just got to get a shot up here. This is Hare, bounces away. Conti tips it. Conti fighting, bumped, fouled. 9.3 to go in overtime. UCLA sensing it now. All she needs is essentially one. That makes it a three possession game and there's just not enough time. What a week it's been for the 20th ranked Bruins. Defeated South Dakota State in the quarters. Trampled Tennessee, the ranked balls yesterday. With an eight point lead in overtime. About to be crowned champs. One more defensive play. UCLA, the battle for Atlanta's champs. An overtime winner. That's a terrific battle by UCLA. Again, I'll go back. They say yes, offense sells tickets. Defense wins games, but it's also rebound wins championships. And UCLA also won the rebound advantage. Look, this is a young team. They have five freshmen, number one recruiting class in the country. They just got ranked today, and they made a statement down here in the Bahamas. And that ranking, it may continue to elevate a whole lot of potential for this UCLA team. 18 points tonight for Kiki Rice, the freshman, is the Bad Boy Mowers player of the game. Never phased by the big moment. This Bruins team, they're young, they're hungry. They play some smart basketball, they're champs today. And Kiki Rice had to step up big. Their senior, their sixth player, Gina Conti, got into foul trouble, and the Rice was, and Kiki Rice, the freshman, was steady Eddie. Look out for the Bruins in the Pac-12. What a way to start it today. Enjoyed it, partner, for Karen LePec and our entire great crew. I'm Kevin Fitzgerald saying so long. Now to Sean Farnham and Jordan Cornett in the studio.